and welcome on this episode of on the shop floor i am at the hindustan aeronautics limited facility in bangalore the assembly line for lca tejas and with me is the man heading hal cb anand krishnan uh, the chairman and managing director uh, who heads uh, the resurgence of hal if one may call it and uh, we are fortunate to get his time uh, to uh, speak to us about hal its plans and how it is going to contribute to india's quest for self reliance thank you very much for thank giving you, us your thank time thank you thank you sir it's a nice opportunity for us as well and thank you for this opportunity my pleasure so let me uh, ask you you know i when i look at the stock market when i look at the order books of uh, hal it seems the order book is full uh, for the next 3 or 4 years what is the uh, you know first of all uh, what are these orders and if you can give us the break up of what are the products that you are going to offer uh, for uh, the market as well as the indian air force yeah in the i mean before getting into the order book right. probably hal has been there in the business for the last almost 6 to 7 decades sure and the performance has been there for all to see correct and that is the confidence and trust which hal has generated with our defense customers as well as with the, the i mean all the ministry and with the even with the honorable prime minister right and with atmanirbhar bharat and self reliance being taking a front seat and with being that being the policy initiatives of the government this government yes uh, hal has also been one of the biggest beneficiaries because we have got a range of indigenously designed and developed products today right and that is getting reflected in our order book position correct so order book today as of now mm-hmm. we have got the major unexecuted to be executed orders one is that as you are aware the 83 numbers of mark sure. i mean 1a lca, LCA and right. apart mm-hmm. from that we have got recently there are another 34 numbers of advanced light helicopters yes and we have also got a trainer basic trainer aircraft of 70 numbers and of course the engines order which is there for rd33 which is powers the mic series of aircraft right so that we have got 18 numbers and another major order which is in the pipeline is mm-hmm. your 240 numbers of al31 fp engines which is to power the suka aircraft that's right so broadly these are the major orders so which actually are, a large spectrum large spectrum of orders which yes. needs to be executed mm-hmm. in the next 3 to 4 year time frame that's right so we have started in the right year now lca you have seen this facility that's right in fact when we started the program mm-hmm. way back in uh, i mean 2008 when we had signed the contract yes this particular facility was supposed to make only eight aircraft okay then with the augmentation of facilities because we wanted we felt that eight numbers is not going to be sufficient to take care of the requirements in uh, future mm-hmm. so we wanted to do the augmentation right. and we have enhanced the capacity from 8 to 16 numbers in a year so in, in in a year 16 right. what i'm talking is eight numbers in a year from to 16 number right so the today the bangalore facility this division lca tejas mm-hmm. division as well as the aircraft division which mm-hmm. is adjacent to this right. can take care of 16 numbers on an annual basis of lca mark 1 year production a huge uh, capacity, capacity enhancement, enhancement. Yeah. and that is that would, and with that in addition to that not only to depend on our own capacity mm-hmm. we have also developed a certain private sector uh, uh, I mean, partnerships right. especially for the structures okay. all the four structures that is that rear fuselage front fuselage center fuselage as well as the wings mm-hmm. we have entered into I mean, partnerships and we have entered into outsourcing arrangements with the various private industry the tier 1 uh, tier 1 supplies. supplier sort of thing mm-hmm. so that that will further uh, strengthen the I mean, uh, supply say, supply chain right. and even if there are going to be some difficulty in our capacities it will be supplemented by sure. that not withstanding this 16 numbers mm. we wanted we felt there is a need for the defense forces to see that the uh, orders are getting executed not only in time it is also well ahead of time absolutely so with this we in mind in fact uh, we have, we have on our own mm-hmm. started thinking of enhancing the capacities further, further from see. 16 numbers to 24 numbers oh that's wonderful mm-hmm. so that is it is with this idea in view we have started the third line in nasik mm. and we have uh, last, last october we have initiated the process and we expect that this third line to become operational mm-hmm. sometime the current uh, calendar year that is sometime between the last quarter of the current uh, calendar year that is between september to december right and our idea is that this year itself we wanted at least one more aircraft or two more aircrafts to be manufactured in our nasik facility oh i see nasik facility what we are designed today is mm. capable of producing another eight aircrafts so that when if you have 24 here whenever 16, it happens 16, 16 here and eight there eight there so that's 24 24 mm. and we wanted it to be fully operational with eight numbers in nasik from okay. 25 26 onwards oh i see so this would mean 16 plus 
ट्वेंटी फोर नंबर्स वी विल बी इन ए पोजिशन टू डिलीवर स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम द फाइनेंशियल इयर ट्वेंटी फाइव ट्वेंटी सिक्स ऑनवर्ड्स इयर लेटर इयर लेटर दिस इयर वी आर एक्सपेक्टिंग सिक्सटीन नंबर एज पर डिलीवरी शेड्यूल वी आर कॉन्ट्रेक्टर डिलीवरी शेड्यूल वी हैव टू गिव सिक्सटीन दिस मार्क वन ए दिस इज मार्क वन ए एंड विद एटी थ्री नंबर्स वी एक्सपेक्टेड टू गेट लिक्विडेटेड ए इयर इन एडवांस ऑफ द कॉन्ट्रेक्टर डिलीवरी शेड्यूल दैट विल बी इयरलियर एज पर दॉन्ट्रेक्टेड इट इज ट्वेंटी एट ट्वेंटी नाइन वी वॉन्ट it to get it completed by 27 28 okay since we have enhanced the capacity right. to 24 number oh, wonderful so as far as lca mark 1a is concerned yes. and subsequently for the lca mark 2 by yes. the time this gets over mark 2 will come into picture Correct. and then your we have got sufficient capacities at our disposal so 24 numbers is something which we are targeting Excellent. we will be able to achieve from next financial year 25 26 and in case if there are going to be further requirement and need to be expedited sure. our nasic capacity can also be enhanced from 8 to, to another four numbers oh. with some incremental investment so you've got that uh, head space there it, it is there yeah. because we do not know what is going to be the requirement of the defense customers in right. the future so we right. wanted to be prepared ourselves mm. so that we keep uh, supplying to them as per the contracted delivery and schedule. it is not only the indian air force but you might have export orders e- exactly precisely <laughs> in fact with that in mind yeah. only we started yeah. the establishing the third line mm. but fortunately for us we are also likely to get another 97 numbers of lca mark 1a right. so it uh, perfectly fits into our plan, plan of action yeah. <laughs> and i think we should be able to successfully execute that lca mark 1a that's wonderful to know so i was going to ask you about exports a little later but now that we have spoken about exports uh, several countries have expressed interest i mean i have also come across people saying this in fact i i had i was one of one of the few people who was in bahrain hmm. when lca first flew at the bahrain air show in 2016 and uh, there is there is interest as you would know but uh, what is the realistic assessment of the interest in lca in the uh, other countries yeah as you are aware uh, till very recently mm. we have been focusing only on the indigenous Correct. customers mm. now very recently we have started focusing because of this uh, export initiatives by the government right. we also started looking the export market very seriously sure. another uh, factor which is to our advantage mm. will be that today we have got a range of products which we can offer to the defense custom i mean right. foreign, foreign country which the case, the case earlier it was not like no. that because we were more of license production except sure. for one or two products we didn't have a range Correct. today since we have got a range the foreign con- many foreign countries have started showing interest mm-hmm. and especially on two products mm-hmm. one is the lca tejas which is proving to be one of the best products of its category sure. and the other one is on the helicopter segment ah, helicopter sure. segment yeah. is again we have got a very varied range of helicopters which so probably large bouquet large bouquet you have yeah. actually yeah. so these have generated interest in the foreign customers mm-hmm. foreign i mean countries right. so as of today there have been interest which have been shown some five to six countries have shown some serious interest one among them as you know is argentina yes. where uh, they have uh, things are, are still under discussion right. but as you know the defense deals it takes long you know, period takes for a long, long period yeah, yeah, to course. come through <laughs> so uh, argentina has shown interest right. and yeah. philippines we are in the advanced stages uh-huh. uh, of uh, discussions okay. so we, we hopefully we should uh, yeah. be able to be successful over there right. and uh, then egypt also we are in discussions Absolutely. with egypt Correct. recently nigeria uh-huh. has gained momentum uh-huh. so okay. i mean uh, there are few more countries which have shown interest initially it was with yelek but now because tejas has also become a product of uh, class That's right. so there have been lot of interest being shown on tejas yeah, also yeah. i hope that uh, now with all the initiatives being taken uh, by hal and yes. we're establishing our offices abroad yes. and the initiatives with the government is taking sooner or later we will have one breakthrough on right <laughs> that's great to know uh, but uh, i think uh, in my assessment helicopters will have more demand uh, than lca tejas so let's talk about the helicopters a little bit you have a large bouquet of helicopters i think all three services indian armed forces have placed orders are going to place orders so that division seems to be uh, on a resurgence kind of a thing so tell us more about these helicopter uh, variants that you have yeah well, i mean one of the reasons uh, for the success stories of helicopter right. has been that we have been there in the business for the last 60 70 years Correct. we have been manufacturing chita cheta yes. since 70s right and then we have faced it out and now chita cheta is not being done but the yes. experience which we have gained mm. 
in the for the manufacture of cheetah chatak has stood us in good stead ah. and one more important reason is that the helicopter design and development was continuing even uh, uh, during the 80s and 90s right. and uh, that is where uh, we have gained the expertise in the design and development and we have our own rotary wing segment which is a research and development uh, sure. uh, center where a range of uh, helicopters are being designed and developed to mm. start with it has been the advanced light helicopter Correct. and advanced light helicopter as you know dhruv has been one of the major success stories yes. today yes. we have supplied more than 300 plus helicopters to the indian defense forces right. and in fact it has evolved from a basic helicopter version of mark 1 yes. to mark 4 which is a weaponized version yeah. so four variants of advanced yeah. light helicopters we are today uh, I mean, supplying to the defense Correct. and it is all proven helicopters Absolutely. the experience again that took a longer period for us to design and develop the dhruv helicopter sure. but the experience which we have gained in dhruv mm -hmm. has stood us in good stead when we have started designing the other helicopters yes. like for instance lch light combat mm -hmm. helicopter prachan which yes. was also inducted by the honorable haram in the last october 2022 yes so it basically it is a combat helicopter which again has has really been uh, appreciated well appreciated by all the customers sure. and it is also i can say uh, days there days are not for of when the foreign interest will also be shown exactly. into that because it is a complete combat helicopter with complete range of weapons which mm -hmm. are over there and uh, that is another success story of hcl that we could design it at a very uh, very i will not say short period at a very reasonable period right. for an helicopter of that class mm -hmm. then our next program was on the light utility helicopters yes. which currently is the design is over ioc has been issued uh, the ioc we mean that initial, yes, operation, initial operation operation clearance correct. Correct. that has been done in sometime in 21 right. and now with uh, we are expected that is expected to replace the uh, chita chita so which means the numbers are going to be huge That's for right. its production yeah. in fact we keeping that in mind we have established a bigger capacity in tumkuru which has come up which is one of the asia's largest uh, mm -hmm. helicopter manufacturing facility right. which has been also been inaugurated by our honorable prime minister and uh, we plan to manufacture those helicopters over there mm -hmm. to start with the capacity will be around 30 and then we are planning to scale it up up to 90 helicopters really? per annum there wow so that's a huge number yeah mm. so we expect there is going to be a huge demand mm. as far as this helicopter segment is mm. concerned mm. whether it be light advanced I mean, lh or whether it be lch or luh mm. and uh, now we are reembarking on a newer program which is a much bigger ton category mm -hmm. that is at imrh indian medium oh, bone yes. helicopter and uh, that you already got a joint facility with safran so, that is that is again for engine in imrh yeah. we wanted to have more of public private partnerships ah, okay. that is a new model which we are trying to right. work out okay. where we thought that engine and uh, earlier the engine for the other helicopters were getting imported from uh, safran under tot we are manufacturing That's in right. bangalore as well yes but this time we wanted joint development of engine mm -hmm. so that the ipr will remain within yeah. the country even so even if it's joint even it, it will remain in it india. will remain in india yeah. so that is the reason why we have entered into with safran yes. for the engine uh, joint development and manufacture of engine in india right. but this imrh is again a 12 ton category helicopter which mm -hmm. is a multi utility helicopter absolutely again uh, this is a class uh, i mean which will which is expected to replace the mi 17s which Correct. we are operating right. so this is we are there timelines are uh, very challenging mm -hmm. so because of the timelines being challenging we also wanted to engage with private industry so that the things move fast and uh, Uh, I mean, it will be available so with the synergies. Are, uh, yeah, uh, uh, thing. And basically. we know, you know that today the sort of expertise which is getting developed in the private industry, right. we would like to leverage that and see that this model is evolving. Correct. So uh, that brings me to the private sector, and HAL has been uh, the dominant player. I would say near monopoly in um, aircraft and uh, aero engines manufacturing, or let's say uh, license manufacturing for a while. Um, if the competition comes in in private sector as it is bound to if you are going to liberalize uh, the defense policies uh, how are you gearing up for that competition uh, in terms of hr policies in terms of uh, technical and engineering skills i would really i mean it is uh, that private industry is evolving and then the aerospace industry i mean defense industry also is evolving right. so i don't really see them as a competition okay because it is an opportunity for hal uh -huh. we have been there in the industry for 6 to 7 decades Correct. and we have developed certain capabilities which are unique to hal which cannot be done overnight by anybody <laughs> so what i mean to say here is it can be over i am i am not getting into that but yeah. at least i can say the now this is an opportunity to showcase yes. the capabilities of hal which has been built over the years right. 
so this would this uniqueness will always be there with mm. hil mm. and we feel that there is a need for private industry also to step in right. because today there are certain entry barriers in the form of your investment the gestation sure. period and things like that mm. but definitely this is an industry where when we are talking about self reliance and atmanirbhar yes. definitely it has to be an ecosystem which has to be developed right. where the private industry also will have a big role to play mm. so mm. all this would mean that the private industry along with the public industry should coexist and ultimately the objective of the country mm -hmm. that is to become self reliant and atmanirbhar can definitely be achieved yes. and as far as hil we are feeling that we have our own unique uh, strengths so we will be able to strengthen our strengths we will be able to rivale so in fact the private industry coming we will be able to probably synergize their strengths along with us to see that the uh, uh, aerospace and defense industry in india is really becoming atmanirbhar itself that's an excellent thought on which to take a break i need to take a break here at this point uh, we will of course continue this conversation with uh, cmd of hal cb anand krishnan uh, we are on the uh, assembly uh, the uh, manufacturing facility of uh, tejas but uh, we will go into the uh, the other hangar which uh, at least uh, shows us the finished product these are uh, the uh, machines where uh, the modular structures are there where some of the parts are uh, manufactured and then put together so we will come back after this break don't go away welcome back i am in conversation with uh, chairman and managing director of uh, hal cb anand krishnan and we are on the shop floor uh, at the tejas manufacturing facility lca tejas mark 1a uh, this is where uh, the lca is going to roll out in its final uh, shape uh, for the indian air force uh, going forward so uh, we were talking about uh, you know how you have those uh, that facility where we were in that hangar now here what are these uh, people doing here when when we see this yeah. particular thing see the structures we have that is not, that, that is known as the structural assembly where the structures are being made the right. hangar yeah. and once the structures are ready they get assembled over here sure. and then the this is the aircraft where the equipping is going on okay. the aircraft structurally it is done yeah. and now the next stage of the aircraft to build is the equipping stage where okay. the different subsystems and subsystems gets connected looming is being done electrical uh, what cables, is, are, cables being are being installed Right. so the complete equipping of the aircraft is being done here mm -hmm. except for the engine engine will be for the final fit which will happen right. and once it is done mm -hmm. then there will be a ground run which will be done which is the next stage of the aircraft okay. this will go there yeah, yeah. and then the engine ground run will be taken mm -hmm. care and once that ground run is done then the painting and the other uh, processes That's which will happen yeah. yeah. and it's a wonderful uh, way to you know sort of have all those skills coming together yes. uh, from so one question uh, that always uh, haunts a lot of people is does india have enough skilled manpower engineers technicians people who assemble the aircraft and all that hl obviously is the only uh, aircraft manufacturing uh, company in india what has been your experience and how are you uh, going to sort of enhance your uh, recruitment enhance your numbers what is, what are the plans yeah uh, i mean uh, to start with uh, the skill sets which are available today definitely needs to be enhanced right. i mean because with the sort of projects which we are uh, sure. uh, would, uh, likely to get and right. we need more manpower and more skilled manpower sure. is there. but the hil uh, sort of a training system is also something unique you know there are not readily available skill sets which are available in the sure. market where we can take and uh, uh, i mean recruit yeah, yeah. so we have got a system for the officers uh, mm -hmm. for the executives engineers right. uh, we have got a management uh, training system mm -hmm. where we recruit every on an every uh, i mean annual basis some 200 to 250 engineers right. and we have a management training program which is spread over a period of 18 months okay so we give on the job training we mm -hmm. give them complete facet of the hals uh, various activities okay. that is all being trained on the shop floor and as well as on the various uh, uh, i mean uh, complexes and division so that they get a flair of a complete uh, uh, aerospace and defense industry right. so once they get trained they become uh, ready for uh, taking over the jobs in the shops right. and there they are into recruit taken as engineers in first 
and then we have got a career uh, progression program which keeps growing up so what happens is that uh, we are very conscious of the fact that the skill mm. knowledge knowledge transfer happens in a very very seamless way right. so that the there is nothing which is lost which mm. has been gained by experienced people who keep superannuating the you knowledge transfer the, happens on a very right. seamless way okay. so that way we are uh, we're having a well structured mechanism mm. as of now but we need to keep improving on that and we are planning to take further manpower in the days to come uh -huh. so that uh, the sort of requirement is fully met right and as far as the employee workman category were there yeah. we are having two sort of categories uh -huh. one is the permanent people who are working there right. in hcl and uh -huh. also the tenure based people who are closer to permanent i mean the in terms of skill set right. but uh, so that the project when it is there we are uh, taking them we will be recruiting them sure. and in after the once the project is over then depending on the needs we right. will try to retain and uh, right so uh, you know what happens is now that you are going to enhance capacity you are going to have enhance manufacturing uh, also i'll come to the mark 2 plan and uh, further the mk plan that is uh, government's plan for that but uh, what has been your experience with the indian air force your primary customer uh, and ada uh, you know unless you all uh, work together it's uh, going to be difficult so tell us more about how you interact with them how you synergize your efforts with both the air force and ada yeah see the most important aspect is that ultimately the customer should have an aircraft right which is which he finds it more uh, i mean uh, satisfies all his requirements okay. the ultimate objective is that we we are as a manufacturer and ada as a designer our responsibility is to provide to the customer okay. a more uh, uh, capable aircraft because sure. they are the front end uh, uh, fighters and they are the people who have to take care of the security Absolutely. so with that is in mind we all work definitely there has been lot of discussions which are going on between we try to have very transparent discussions between ada or the design agency and who are the hcl along with hcl right. or the manufacturing as well as the design partners for ada and along with the customers right. we continue and also the other agency being the similac who is the certification, certification agency yes. so all the four agencies we work in synchronizations mm -hmm. so that the common objective of coming out with one of the best aircraft is completely achieved that's right so mm -hmm. we we do have certain requirements keep coming up from the indian air force mm -hmm. but we find that their requirements are all based on the needs sure. so necessarily we will also have to find ways and means of how to of tweaking to, the yeah, requirements think, or taking so, the manufacturing yeah, this is not something mm -hmm. which is uh, 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 so, uh, <laughs> it has a continuing uh, develop the program yes. of this nature it's right. a continuous process Correct. so we need to keep continuous be upgrading the aircraft That's right. even uh, as you are aware even the f16 is still in place only oh, because course. of upgradation yeah, yeah, so that is very critical and we 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 along with the design agency ada we keep doing that. excellent so uh, before i go to about two or its road map what is your experience with uh, vendors you know i was looking at the chart uh, where you have some uh, 150 or 300 uh, different uh, vendors uh, bringing in different parts which is anywhere this is how uh, aircraft are manufactured uh, and also uh, different locations in india which also creates job opportunities all that what has been your experience with your uh, all the three tiers 1 2 and 3 uh, vendors in india have they are they coming up to your expectations now yeah very much i you can see that hcl has been uh, outsourcing and we have been there in the vendor development not now we have been there in the last 5 6 decades we have right. been doing that in fact we are happy today that some of the tier 1 or tier I mean, tier 2 suppliers who are tier 2 tier 3 suppliers who were there as part of hcl's mm -hmm. ecosystem mm -hmm. uh, today they have all been listed companies and they are uh, doing much well so that gives us lot of happiness that the ecosystem which is created around hcl sure. is developing quite well right. so our vendor experience has been quite well mm -hmm. we are trying to develop new vendors mm -hmm. with the sort of indigenization which we are planning now right. and with the sort of self reliance which we will have to achieve the role of the uh, indian vendors and indian supply chain we will have to make a very robust supply chain if in in within the country Correct. and for with the indian vendors are going to play a major role mm -hmm. we are hand holding them we are trying to develop the products which we have either to been importing right. so that the vendors will become fully equipped and they will be become a part of the supply chain for the chain excellent so let's come to uh, mark 2 Uh, which was uh, sanctioned by the government uh, and you know it's uh, air force has been told to go for it obviously hcl is the manufacturer uh, 
Uh, what is the timeline for uh, Mark II uh, first flight or whatever you want to call it? Yeah, Mark II, ADA, ADA is the lead design right. agency and Correct. HAL also has been associated sure. with ADA to take Correct. care of certain design activities. Correct. So, uh, we have completed the uh, I mean, preliminary design review as well as critical design review. CDR right. also has been completed in last December. Okay. Certain components also have been st we have started mm -hmm. manufacturing. So, we expect the first prototype mm -hmm. to roll out uh, sometime uh, end of next year, that okay. is in 25, right. December around. Right. This is what the plan is mm -hmm. and uh, we will be able to come out with the first prototype by 25 mm -hmm. and after that, it will take another two, two and a half years for the various certification processes sure. to take place. Mm -hmm. So, we expect somewhere around 28 to 29, the production sh should come on and okay. we should be able to deliver the first aircraft right. in 29. Okay. And of course, uh, the Air Force is fully on board about it because that's their... Uh, in fact, one of the things that the Air Force keeps telling me is that Mark II is very crucial for the next leap, uh, mm -hmm. which is uh, the Am Advanced uh, Medium Combat Aircraft, AMCA. Uh, on AMCA, how will you meet that challenge? Because uh, one of we have uh, this is the engine, right? Right now, which you are using, yeah, four zero four. Four zero four. Then uh, Mark II is likely to have uh, we are told F four one four, which is about ninety eight kilonewtons, is what uh, they keep telling us. G four one four. What is the plan and what is the uh, you know I would say uh, philosophy for uh, AMCA coming in? Uh, AMCA, it is still at uh, much, uh, I mean, preliminary stages. So conceptual stage. Conceptual stage yeah. rather. Yeah. And uh, ADA has been the, again the agency, lead design, design agency yeah. over there. And the engine is still under discussion. It has right. not been uh, finalized yes. as yet. Uh, so Mark II, yes, GV414, we have already entered into an MOU with them. Right. And uh, shortly we will also be signing that manufacturing license agreement where the I mean, under 80% uh, transfer of technology which will happen. And, the and that's for manufacturing. manufacturing. Right. So, this will mm -hmm. take care of the Mark II requirements, right. NCA Mark II. Mm -hmm. Now, AMCA, well, yeah, I mean, at this point of time, we may not be able to tell as to exact nature of the engine. Sure. Of course, it needs a more powerful engine, 110 kilo Newton, right. as compared to this 98 kilo Newton. Right. How it will be done and who will be doing it, it is... And that, of uh, course, is uh, uh, government's yeah, decision is, and going forward. But, I mean, would you agree to this, um, you know, theory that if Mark II is done well here in HAL, obviously will do because you got this expertise of uh, Mark I, Mark I A and then Mark II, will allow uh, AMCA's uh, development or manufacturing whenever it comes 10-15 years down the line uh, much faster than these uh, earlier two variants of LCA Mark One and Two. Yeah, manufacturing part of it, as I have told, yeah. the capacities are being yes. uh, built in. Correct. So that way we will be able to. We are, HAL will be well equipped to take care of the that's, manufacturing that's the point, equipment. Yes. That will yeah. not be an issue. Right. But it again depends on what will be the business model which will be followed for Amcas. Uh, that's right. Uh, also, it's design. Design. I mean. Yeah, design. <laughs> And what, whether to what extent public-private partnership model will, will be involved, that will all be decisions to be taken. Sure. But as far as HL is concerned, we are we are always capable and I mean we have got the capacities to do. That's that. the confidence that is required yes. actually, because uh, HL I think now is in the space of uh, actually being very self-confident about what you are doing yourself. Earlier it was about assembling and uh, TOT manufacturing. Uh, so in that respect. Uh, LCA uh, has given you so much of wealth of experience. How are you institutionalizing that? You mentioned that people who are superannuating will pass on to the new recruits and all that. Even otherwise, uh, what about R&D? I mean, do you do, uh, HAL does uh, a lot of R&D into yes. all this? In fact, uh, mm -hmm. as you are aware, we have got uh, two major R&D centers. Right. One is for the fixed wing aircraft, mm -hmm. fighter aircrafts right. and the trainers of course, fixed sure. wing category. The other one is on the rotary wing segment. Absolutely. Rotary wing is where we have discussed Correct. some time back. That's right. Fixed wing air, uh, and apart from that, there are R&D centers attached to every division. Okay. Where the divi the pro yeah, program, once it gets stabilized and we get sure. into manufacturing state, mm. many of the, uh, the R&D is a continuous process. Yes. Because we keep developing, we keep adding some more uh, functionalities. Uh, right. And we keep indigenizing it, mm. we keeping, I mean, this is an evolved process which keeps going on, even if the aircraft is mature. Sure. So that, we are having almost 13 R&D centers spread across the country. Mm. So they do the R&D activities right. and we are also today mm. giving more focus on the R&D program. Right. The reason being the success which we have got in our own indigenous exactly. developed platforms mm. has given us a lot of confidence yes. and we have also now started mm. 
uh, earmarking a separate R&D fund with 15% of profit being uh, flowed back oh, into that R&D fund. Mm -hmm. And we wanted to take this R&D forward in a big way. Right. Slowly, we wanted to be seen as a technology company. Correct. <laughs> and uh, this manufacturing part of it, there are private industries is always there. Yes. We will try to be an integrator. We will try to hold the high PRs for the products which are developed. Right. And the operationalizing a part of it, we would like to see the private sector in a more bigger way. Oh, that's a very good plan because that's how everywhere, I mean, the successful countries like uh, US and France have done this uh, on that model itself. Um, we are now in front of uh, a finished product, if I can say that, yeah. Tejas. Uh, and uh, when the, uh, I think in the uh, hangar outside, I saw one, one more, which is uh, ready to yeah. fly, so I suppose. So uh, when this uh, does this first flight or whatever, I mean, uh, you've done this, uh, what is the process involved just for the viewer's interest? Once you do this flight here, the test pilots come yeah, here and yeah. uh, they do that. See, what happens is that these are all first the trainer aircraft. Right. Because that, uh, no, you can see the tandem them, yeah. seating is there. Right. So, this trainer aircraft is what we are delivering in the current year right. because all the fighters, 32 fighters have already been delivered. Right. The process is once the aircraft is ready mm -hmm. and once the ground runs and checks have been done, yes. Then the pilot test, our, we have our own set of sure. test pilots. Mm -hmm. So we will get the clearance from uh, Similac right. for doing that. They will issue the RSD sort of thing. Eh? Right. And after that, our pilots will start flying this aircraft to test it. Sure. To see that the all the functionalities for which it is required are all being met. Mm -hmm. Once we are done with that, and after our three or four sorties, depending on what mm -hmm. is the snacks which is com coming up, Correct. if the aircraft is ready, mm -hmm. then we go, uh, the customer's uh, CRI, that the inspector will also be there. Sure. Is part of the DGA QA. Correct. So they will uh, come and again certify that this aircraft is ready for flying and right. will issue a signaling out certificate to the customer. So the signaling out certificates indicates that the aircraft is ready for delivery. Mm -hmm. The customer's pilots can come and ferry out the aircraft. Right. After that, the customer's pilots come over here. Sure. They have got a board of officers to mm -hmm. check that all the yeah. functionalities yeah. are all okay. Mm -hmm. Once that is done, mm -hmm. the customer pilots then they ferry out the aircrafts. Right. So one of the things that I had heard about Almost, I would say, 10 years ago, uh, when the Tejas went out for the first time to Bahrain, like I mentioned, uh, used to be uh, a refrain uh, from commentators and you know people who were closely watching Tejas' mm. development was that it's a good plane, but not yet a good fighter. Mm. Uh, has that changed? I know it has changed, but I want you to tell us uh, how has that changed now? Yeah. In fact, uh, initially when we started with our uh, LSP contract, it happens in any no, fighter no, program. So, tell us so, the journey. Yeah. Hmm. So it started with our, I mean, IOC contract. Yes. We will say yes. that initially 20 numbers. That's right. Then the FOC. Then came. the FOC came. Mm -hmm. yeah. Then IOC, uh, FOC had a certain more features than added to IOC. Right. And with Mark 1A, mm. we have added major systems like mm. this radar system has been strengthened, ASR radar, that right. electronically array, uh, when multiple array radar that yes. has been uh, taken. And then the BVR beyond visual range missiles have also been added. Exactly. And the mo some more weapon systems and the uh, uh, sort of fun I mean, the advancements for better maintainability issues mm. that has also been added. So today the aircraft is fully in a combat mode. Mm. It, it has got eight hard points where it can carry the weapons right. and uh, mm -hmm. where it can deliver the weapons also. Right. And so this Mark 1A will definitely be a better, much better aircraft in terms of its combat capability sure. as compared to the earlier versions. Right. So this we are not left. I think this is what the customer also wanted. Correct. And this Mark 1A would exactly fit in. Mm -hmm. And of course Mark 2 will carry because this one day restriction in Mark 1A is the quantum of load which it sure. can carry, payloads, because it can be yeah, size Indian of the engine thrust. Yeah. thrust. Mm -hmm. So it, it is Mark 1A is around 3000 tons, uh, 3 tons rather, yeah. it can carry, but the whereas payload, payload, payload yeah. it can be 3, 3 tons, right. whereas Mark 1A, I mean sorry, Mark Two. 1A, it mm -hmm. can carry 3, 3.5. And uh, Mark 2 can carry up to 6 k 6,000 kg payload. That's right. So, otherwise, uh, the aircraft as such, uh, we have... So, uh, all, all the, the avionics, systems, all the... Avionics, avionics has been upgraded. Mm. Your radar system has been upgraded. Mm. Your missile system has been... That's better right. missile system has been given. Mm. And uh, uh, then EW suit and uh, your electronic warfare suit. Yes. And the, I mean, jammers and things like that has all been upgraded. Uh, so, I feel that this will be a complete aircraft when it comes to combat capabilities. Great. So last one final question, but it's a personal uh, thing. Your journey in HAL, you've been in HAL for how long and how has been your journey in HAL? 
Yeah, in fact, I would say this has been my excellent uh, journey in HAL. I have joined, in fact, in 2004. Earlier, mm -hmm. I was there with both private industry as mm -hmm. well as uh, now I am there in public sector. Right. So, my mix of experience in the private has also helped me over here. I'm sure. But in HAL, I can say that this is an organization mm -hmm. where I feel really that I have the privilege of serving this organization because the work which is being done, the technical brain which is available here, and the capabilities which exist mm -hmm. and the sort of uh, opportunities which is given to any person, mm -hmm. not necessarily it has to be at a hierarchy level, right. it can be across the board, even an entry engineer, if he has got the capability, he is being given the opportunity. So this organization is such a professional organization. Only thing is that uh, the, the, the sort of capabilities which it has got, mm -hmm. it was not being known to the public right. uh, uh, till now. Mm -hmm. Now things have started, uh, yeah. I mean, uh, looking, I mean, people have started looking at yeah, HAL. Yes, yes. So that would mean that uh, HAL's capabilities which was there elsewhere available mm -hmm. earlier, right. now it has become uh, in public domain. That's uh, good to know and I think uh, one of the uh, key elements in this has been Prime Minister Modi and yes. Raksha Mantri Rajnath Singh's uh, support and uh, encouragement to HAL. Was the Prime Minister here? Exactly, this place he was uh, the Honourable Prime Minister after flowing the sortie mm. in LCA, yeah. Tejas. He had the, I mean, he wanted to I mean, see the LCA division as well. Right. And in fact, he was here, he spent some almost 15 to 20 minutes time over here. Okay. He had gone through all the, I mean, whatever the uh, the elements are built which was happening. Right. So he has gone through with this inquisitiveness, he has asked so much of uh, questions, questions on this. On this. Yes. So he was quite impressed with the facilities mm. and with the sort of aircraft which we HAL is making right. and that has been one of the biggest motivations for HAL. The Honorable Prime Minister and the Honorable Rakshamandri of the country supporting HAL right. along with our Defense Secretary and the Ministry officials. Sure. Today the climate is so conducive mm. that we are fully motivated mm. and we wanted to do better and better always. And what was his message to HAL employees and to HAL at large? He, he, was, he was just, I mean, he, he had words of appreciation from mm -hmm. him. He has been telling that you have all been doing such good work, mm -hmm. continue to do that. And the interest which he has shown itself right. is an indication right. that he is uh, quite impressed with the HAL and that has been the biggest motivation for him. I'm sure. And HAL has bright future as we've already discussed. Uh, so, I wish you all the best and thank your you. team. Thank you. Uh, and thank, thank you for this opportunity. Thank we you. We were looking to come and, uh, you know, sort of look at how uh, Tejas is developing and what Tejas is being manufactured. So, thanks for this opportunity and thank you for taking us around in this facility. No, I should also thank you for having taken time off and come and visited our facilities and also taken interest to, to develop a story around HIL. That is something which is very critical, which is which will always be a motivating factor. For it's, an, uh, it's our pleasure and uh, thank you for uh, this opportunity again. So that was uh, C.B. Anand Krishnan, HIL's uh, Chairman and Managing Director, showing us around in the Tejas uh, building or manufacturing facility, Tejas uh, LCA Mark 1A. Uh, we will keep bringing uh, such stories to you from the shop floor of different Indian companies given that Bharat Shakti's uh, tagline is self-reliance in defence and we will continue to try and focus and bring you such success stories. Uh, hope to see you in the next episode soon. For the time being, it's goodbye. In the next episode of On the Shop Floor, we travel to Pune or a place near Pune called Talegaon and we visit an interview the head of LNT Defence, Arun Ramchandani, on the shop floor. Don't miss watching it.